Greetings. Today I'm going to cover a hot topic in the open source community. EFSense versus OPNSense. Which one is better? Let's start with some history, shall we? The PFSense project started in 2004 as a fork of the Monowall project and the first release was in 2006. The name was derived from the fact that the software uses the packet filtering tool, PF. OPNSense is a fork of PFSense. It was launched in January 2015. When Monowall closed down in February 2015, its creator referred its developer community to OPNSense. Fun fact, in November 2017, a World Intellectual Property Organization panel found that NetGate, the copyright holder of PFSense, had been using the domain opnsense.com in bad faith to discredit OPNSense, a competing open source firewall. It compelled NetGate to transfer the domain to the CISO, the developer of OPNSense. Both products are based on FreeBSD, but from my own experience, PFSense project is using more up-to-date version of FreeBSD and puts in more effort to make the system easier to use and more complete. One small example of that would be Chelsea drivers automatically loaded into the kernel on system startup. When with OPNSense, you have to tinker with configuration files to get that up and running, and even then, the moment you add another network card to your system, it will reset the configuration file. I'm not stating that out of the blue. I've experienced it in the past. Thankfully, it was only a test bench. Both systems are open source. The PFSense project is hosted and developed by NetGate. Any unauthorized use of this trademark is prohibited by the federal and international law. PFSense is distributed under the Apache 2 license. OPNSense is licensed under an open source initiative approved license. This is a quote from their official website. We like the BSD license, a simple two clause license that gives freedom to the audience we want to serve. It basically gives you the right to do whatever you want to do with the code, even fork it and take it from there. OPNSense update schedule consists of two major releases each year, which are updated about every two weeks. The major releases version number consists of the year and month of release. For example, 19.1 for the January 2019 release. I gotta mention one cool thing about OPNSense update interface. You don't only see the list of all updates. Firewall will also show you the release notes, known vulnerabilities, and list of new features. This is very thoughtful of OPNSense team and very futuristic in my opinion. PFSense releases are made when they are ready. A public schedule is not available at this time, but release announcements and progress messages are made on the NetGate blog. They provide maintenance releases as needed, typically a couple per year. These include primarily bug fixes and security updates. OPNSense update cycle is one of the things that people are ranting about a lot. And to make this process easier for us, we installed a small OPNSense instance at our office and we are doing updates regularly on it. If we notice any issues, we will roll back and skip on that update for our clients. But if everything is all right, we have a shell script that will push the updates to all of our clients' offices. Both firewall systems have a handful of features. DNS server, DHCP server and DHCP relay, NAT, one-to-one -one NAT, manual outbound NAT, automatic NAT reflection, interface or zone-based firewall, internet line failover and load balancing, bridge and lag interface types, VLANs, wireless capabilities, VPN, both systems include OpenVPN and IPsec by default, and both can be extended via third-party plugins. Firewall rules schedule, web proxies, QoS, ability to automatically log all the changes and revert back to any one of the earlier configurations, high availability, and much more.
one killer feature that only PFSense has is automatic encrypted system backups to Google Drive or Nextcloud. Every time there is a change on the system, it will be automatically logged and then backed up to a place of your choice. On the other hand, PFSense has a PF blocker. With it, you can do basic DNS-based web filtering, country-based filtering, IP white or blacklisting, and much more. PFSense also has a great set of email notification options and ARP Watch plugin which basically notifies me via email if there are any new clients on the network. This way I can make sure that no one drops some Raspberry Pi on one of my internal networks to do various bad things. These features are missing from the OPN Sense. Another thing worth noting is that PFSense supports both Suricata and Snort, when OPN Sense only supports Suricata. Plugins is really where both of these systems shine. Your firewall can become anything you want it to be. OPN Sense has a much longer list of plugins than PFSense does. But unfortunately, some of them are completely undocumented or buggy. One example of that would be a Zabbix agent and Zabbix proxy. If you have any one of these installed, you wouldn't be able to restart a firewall from the web GUI because the underlying system can't finish the process gracefully. The only way to restart or shut down is to SSH in and issue power off or reboot command directly. Although the PFSense has a smaller list of packages, I didn't see any one of them misbehaving. And yes, I see many individuals typing in the comments at this very moment, how horrible of a bug they've met before. And I'm not saying that PFSense can't have them. I can only talk from two year experience of using PFSense at our data center and most of the client locations. If you are interested, here is the full list of packages for both systems. Full disclosure here, I absolutely love OPN Sense web interface. It feels snappier, more complete, and in general makes more sense. The search function is just a lifesaver, especially when you are new to the system. As an example, look at the location of power off reboot menu items on both systems. On OPN Sense, it looks like this. There is a power menu and we have a reboot submenu or power off submenu. On the PFSense, you have to go to diagnostics and then halt system would be to power off and the reboot would be to reboot the system. If I didn't have any experience with PFSense, this is not where I would look for these options at all. Now on the back end, PFSense runs Nginx, which is a good choice but then running this same system as Nginx proxy becomes problematic. OPN Sense, on the other hand, runs on top of light HTTPD, and you can use it as your advanced Nginx proxy, which includes a lot of features right from the web GUI. IP access lists, load balancing, SSL certificate management, and much, much more. It even includes the web application firewall. The only thing you need to do to start using WAF is to click download button over here to download the core rules for blocking the bad traffic. OPN Sense is an absolute winner here. It supports 2FA all the way from admin web management login to open VPN server logins. Multi-factor authentication is built in. PFSense is really behind on this one, and the only way to activate 2FA on it is using the free radius, but even then, multi-factor authentication will cover only the VPN logins. I'll be ranting about my experience for a bit here. If you feel like you don't want to hear it, click the next timecode where I'll post the overall score for both systems. Let's start with OPN Sense. As much as I want to use it, there are still some rough edges. That reboot issue that I've talked about earlier, Chelsea drivers are not loaded by default, and even a weirder issue. My OPN Sense lost all the interface configuration when I added a new network card to the existing system. 
something that PFSense handled just fine. Because of these rough edges, I can't recommend using OPNSense in production on big systems with a lot of network cards. But for smaller installations, it works just fine. We rolled out OPNSense to a reasonable number of small offices and none of them had any issues so far. On the bright side, OPNSense has a great licensing model, which gives its community more control and flexibility over the product. Also, a number of their plugins are far better than its competitors. For example, Let's Encrypt by default uses non-standard port for certificate validation to free up the port 80 and automatically handles firewall rules during the process of issuing, reissuing or renewing the certificates. Now, few words about PFSense. The product had been around for a while, so their team can deliver a solution that's more stable and mature in production. I fully trust it for our own data centers or whenever we have a bigger deployment. Couple of issues to point out here, PFSense cannot roll out a lot of new features at the same time because it can potentially break some old things. So their team tries to stay very conservative with the software update model. Also, after the NetGate bought PFSense, license became more restrictive. Thank you all for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.